And <clears throat> now I used to epoxy these on. All my flies had epoxy dyes on them, but I've gotten familiar with using this uh, these acrylic substitutes for epoxy. This is um, Tough Fly. And there's uh, Clear Cure Goo, and there's UV Not Sense, and there's a, there's a bunch of different ones. These guys were pretty much Tough Fly and, and Clear Cure Goo were kind of the first two that came onto the market. They kind of originated this, but a lot of people have jumped on this acrylic bandwagon, and there's all sorts of different stuff out there you can get now. But this is the greatest stuff for an epoxy substitute because all you do, it comes in a syringe, it's got an applicator tube on the front, and all you do is just squeeze it in, squeeze the syringe, and squeeze your material into where you want it to go. Um, it doesn't have a curing time, so it won't set up on you. Uh, yet it's still fairly thick, sort of like 5-minute epoxy is uh, just as it starts to set up. That state of 5-minute epoxy where it just starts to set up and it just starts to thicken up on you. That's about the state this comes out in. And and so it it's really easy to use. It does flow a bit, which is good. I just use my vise, turning it back and forth to kind of get it where I want it to go. Uh, the other thing you can use is a needle or a bodkin, just like you would 5-minute epoxy. And you can just kind of move that around and it'll kind of flow a bit for you and go where you want it to go just to come down the front here and kind of cover the front portion of the thread wraps cover that back portion a little bit so we're not uh, just kind of get it how you want it you can use your vise if you have a rotary vise if not you can hold it in your hand it works just great and then hit it with the light as soon as you hit it with the light it sets um, and then you need about three or four seconds to cure completely but as soon as the light hits it it'll set and I hold the light on it for about 10 seconds because I just want it to thoroughly cure. I want a durable head. And what's well, 10 seconds? I mean, five seconds or 10 seconds, no big deal. It's no uh, 10 seconds is going to an extra five seconds holding the light's not going to make a difference in my life, is what I'm trying to say. So there we go. That's cured, <clears throat> and then just flip the fly over, and we'll do the same thing underneath the fly. Add in our material. The other nice thing about this is that it cures 100% clear, just like a window. And that's important. Like I mentioned when I started tying this fly, you know, I tie my flies with red. I like to get red in the fly. And this way I can, right? I've got red, I've got a red head. It's built up a little larger than maybe other people would do, but I like that little bit larger thread head. And then you put the eyes on it, now the red will show through especially underneath the fly. It'll look like a bit of a gill slash underneath the fly or, or whatever. And you don't have to worry about adding other materials into your fly to get that red. This tough fly almost magnifies the red. It's almost like looking through a, a magnifying glass at the red thread. Get that where you want it, hit it with the light. And it just shines right through. And I like that about it as well. It's, it, doesn't, it doesn't cure cloudy or distort anything at all. It cures it cures very clear and very bright and materials shine right through it. So again we'll hold the light on there for a little bit, about 10 seconds. Get that head nice and cured. Perfect. So there we go. Yep, excellent. Now it does dry a little tacky or cure a little tacky, has a tacky residue. Um, that's because if you're tying big saltwater flies and you're layering, you're putting more than one layer of this stuff on, that tackiness allows the next layer to bond very well to the first layer, uh, much more effectively than it would if it didn't have that tacky coating on it. And I don't know if you've ever seen like layered epoxy. I used to, when I used to use five minute epoxy and layer my flies, um, layer my heads for big flies, I would find sometimes the epoxy would would delaminate at those layers, right? It would cure. You couldn't really tell by looking at it that there was two or three layers there. But maybe if you fish it once or twice, you get some water in there, it would delaminate and layers would start to peel off and you would crack and you would see it, you would notice it. 
because it has a tacky residue when it cures, you can put numerous coats on top and they bond 100% to one another. And you don't ever get that delamination and you never can tell that it's numerous layers of epoxy. So that's why it dries with a tacky residue. Some guys don't like that they complain about it, but that's why it's like that. All you gotta do is just coat it with your Dave's Flex Cement or your Hardest Hull, or I use the Tough Fly Top Coat. They had make a product that they use for it. It's about the same price as the head cement. It's not expensive. You just coat that after you're done curing it with the with the product, whatever it is, like I said, hard as hull or top coat, whatever, and it gets rid of that tacky residue. It will dry completely non-tacky then. It doesn't harden up the head at all, but it dries it it dry it makes it so it doesn't have a tacky residue on a tacky feel to it. So we've got a two-tone fly, got a gray back. We need to color our brush, our dubbing brush gray. This is a Prismacolor Pantone pen, waterproof art marker, whatever you want to call it, um, in cool gray. And it's 80% gray. They come in percentages, so you can lighten or darken the amount of gray that you have in your pen. I like a darker gray. I get it 80%. Now all we do is we just color this fly in. This is very simple process um, and like we did on the coon bait fish you just lift up color underneath color on top the difference between this and the coon bait fish is that on the coon bait fish we were using a natural material ra raccoon um, on the this fly it's a synthetic material ZP sparkle and the synthetic material takes a Pantone pen much better than a natural material uh, it'll color in way quicker and it'll color in way darker way more solid um, and so if you're doing a lot of Pantone pen coloring on your flies you know you're probably going to want to look for synthetic materials that allow you to color them in very well and this EP Sparkle in, is one of them um, Craft Fur is another tie a lot of things out of Craft Fur and color them in works very well so you can see it doesn't take very long at all and all of a sudden we've got our nice gray head. Um, the synthetic material takes the color very well. We'll just uh, use my fine point here right behind the eyes just to darken that up a little bit. Beautiful. There you go. Now there is one th more thing you can do if you want. You'll see what I mean by that red showing through underneath and on top. That red is very bright and it shows right through. But if you did want to add a little more red, sometimes I do, I'll take my red Pantone marker. Um, in, I'll just color underneath here. Just extend that throat out a little bit right onto the EP Sparkle. And you can get some red in that way. On the original fly, Bart ties in red rabbit and uh, that's great it works really good it looks great too but I just find with the CP sparkle why not just color in a little bit of red on the bottom the stuff takes the Pantone coloring so well and it's so bright now you got a nice bright thread underneath your uh, your epoxy here you've colored the throat a little extended out a little bit you got some red in the fly and that is the Barto minnow tied pike style um, like I said, I made a few adjustments. The original fly, the eyes are glued right onto the synthetic material, the synthetic brush. You bring it all the way to the eye and you glue the eyes onto it. It does make for a slightly more realistic looking bait fish when you do that. But I have found that no matter what you glue the eyes on with, and I have bought like commercial, extremely expensive model glue, that this stuff you could you could glue yourself to the ceiling and hang there no matter how heavy you were, you, you would stay. This is like the strongest glue you can buy. I've still had the eyes come off because no matter what, they're attached to material. They're attached to some sort of some sort of a synthetic material. And even if the glue holds, the material won't. It'll rip. It'll tear, and you'll lose the fly. Usually, when you're fishing with when I'm fishing for pike, and and I've, I used to tie the fly with the eyes glued onto the onto the synthetic material onto the dubbing brush. Um, usually, first fish, first second fish, they would rip an eye off, and I don't like that. I want my eyes to stay on the fly and not get ripped off. And so. I just alter the pattern slightly by stopping the, dubbing br stopping the dubbing brush about an eighth of an inch back from the eye of the hook, building up a thread head, putting my eyes on, and putting the epoxy in. It makes the fly way more durable. Uh, the other thing I did was Bart is very concerned about building a bulk in the fly. <clears throat> he cuts off all his tag ends, and then when he gets to the body portion, he adds in chenille 
down the length of the hook shank and wraps the dubbing brush over top of the chenille to, to give his body a little fuller appearance. I don't bother with that step, I just eliminate that by tying my tag ends all down and binding them to the hook shank. That adds bulk on the hook shank and I can just wrap my dubbing brush right over top of that. Speeds up the process a little bit. And then he's also added some ice fur in behind here between the transition point between the Icelandic sheep and the dubbing brush to kind of ease that transition point through. But I don't really find that's a necessary step when I'm tying a pike fly. Um, the pike certainly don't seem to care. And so I've eliminated that step. It makes the fly a little quicker to tie. Um, and by far adding that glue in between some of your tying processes and moving the dubbing brush back an eighth of an inch and tying the eyes in at the front with the epoxy makes the fly ten times more durable and when, you, when you're using it specifically for pike that makes a difference. So that's it. That's the Bardo Minnow. Again, you can tie this in numerous color combinations. You can use olive green for the back, yellow bucktail underneath here, a chartreuse dubbing brush, you know, colored with an olive pantone pen on top. That would make it look more like an all, um, like a walleye minnow or a juvenile pike. Um, it's versatile. It still moves very good in the water. Has a bit of flash. A little smaller, a little less, a little more streamlined. But this is one of the great flies for any type of predatory fish out there. It works great for pike. You need to have it in your box. It's easy to tie. I hope you enjoyed it. Stay tuned because we got some more coming. There's a couple more of my trusted pike patterns coming down the line. Stay tuned. Fishingrod.blogspot.com